Good morning, TFC. Let's stand, raise our hands and our eyes to the one, and worship him. You thought of me to be the one to carry your glory, to shine your light and tell of your story. I can't believe you thought of me. thought of me to be the one to shout your victory to share your love that sets the captives free I can't believe you thought of me oh, the whole earth is full of your glory all of creation sings out your praises my heart will never stop singing. I was created for this, for your glory, for your glory. And now I see the promises, the promises much bigger than just me. You gave me.
the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for so beautifully but do you believe it down in your soul do you believe it down in your spirit welcome welcome to the family church where our mission is to create to connect and to empower to see you come in with your struggles and go out changed renewed transformed by the power of an almighty God you may be seated. In way of announcement, 180 Ministries is having their sheet sale. You got to be careful how you read that. Sometimes I think they'll set you up for failure if you ain't careful. <laughs> A sheet sale. Please see a 180 member to make your purchase. And you, knew, you do need new sheets, by the way. Nobody likes them old beads all on it. Go buy some new sheets. This Wednesday, we'll have a special puppet performance. Say, puppet performance. If you haven't seen them yet, I've, I've been blessed enough to see them. It truly is a blessing. I want to thank all of those who have put in the time and effort to make that possible. Camo Sunday, next Sunday, October the 8th. Come dressed in your camouflage. Leave your guns at home. Just wear your camouflage. 
October the 15th, Jim Kids will have breakfast with Pastor. Say breakfast with Pastor, kids. Also that Sunday, Brother Joel Whitley will be ministering here for us. And now I'm going to move out of the way because we have a special announcement by a special lady in our church. Thank you, Brother Nathan. Okay, so on October the 29th, we are going to be having, I'm going to say annual because I think we've done it two years in a row. So we're going to say our annual fun day. Um, we're going to have games, food, bounce houses, and this year we're going to have a chili cook-off. I know there may be still some feelings <laughs> from the house. over our last chili cook-off, so I told him this could be his year for redemption. I don't know if he's hearing that, but there will be prizes given to our first, our second, and our third place winners, um, and this will be, event will be held here at TFC, and that will be following our worship service. Um, we're going to dress casual that day. You don't have to dress up. Hallelujah. Um, if you would like to sign up, please do so at our information desk back there. Now, we only have 10 spots available, so you're going to want to get signed up as soon as possible where you can win first, second, or third place. And the deadline to sign up is October the 18th. Thank you. Everybody say praise God. Nah. You can stand. I'm going to try to get pastor's stuff back in order here. It feels like it's turned the wrong way, but I'm going to let him fix it. You know, I want to take just a just a second. I want to speak to someone that's got a lot in common with me. You try your best to do good. You fight the daily fight of, of trying to keep the faith. But no matter how hard you fight, there always seems to be something right around the corner. There seems to be another struggle. There seems to be another thing thrown along your path. There just seems to be something every time you look up. Much like that of old Job. I'm not trying to be downtrodden. I'm just trying to be honest with someone today. God says, hast thou considered my servant Job? You see, there's none like him in, in the earth. He's perfect and an upright man. He put forth the effort to do that which was right. Diligent in his ways, diligent in his seeking, diligent. But yet, here he finds himself facing. Yet again, another struggle, yet Again, another trial. I don't know who that is today. A battle. A fight. A diagnosis. Depression. Anxiety. Frustration. Anger. Here's one for you. Contentment. I want better. I desire more. But oh, the struggle keeps me downtrodden all the time. The struggle robs my faith. The, the struggle robs my praise. The, the struggle robs my worship. The struggle robs my time with God. The struggle robs my personal worship and time of reading and prayer. The struggle. Because see, if I just would quit, it would probably just get easy. Then Isaiah 54 tells me this. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. It says, before you have born, before the trial is over, before you've conquered that thing that stands before you, just go ahead and begin to sing. Just begin to go ahead and make way for the miracle that has not taken place yet. You have, who have not labored with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. Says the Lord, watch this, it says, enlarge the place of your tent. 
He said, begin to go ahead and make a little room for your miracle. You have not seen it yet, but if you'll just begin to sing, if you'll just begin to worship, if you'll just begin to praise beyond your circumstance, when you begin to enlarge your tent, when you begin to make room for the miracle, the God of the heavens and the earth will come down and begin to sup with you right in the midst of the struggle, right in the midst of that diagnosis. Would you put our names up, please? I don't know who that's for this morning. That find yourself right in the middle of a struggle, but yet look at where you found yourself this morning. You're not here by happenstance. You're here by divine appointment with an almighty God. Lord, we come loving you. We come exalting you, Lord. You see every name on this screen. And Lord, you're a God that is well able to do exceeding and abundant. Lord, we lay each one of them down at the throne of an almighty God with the expectation to see the hand of God, that right hand of God of power to begin to move and do a miracle in every situation. And Lord, we're going to be careful to give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name.
one person in here that needs to hear something. And I could be only speaking to myself. Somebody is struggling, whether they are in this building or whether they are watching, with depression. And if it's you, please step out. I promise you that I've been in your shoes. I wanted to take my own life. And I thought of every way under the sun to do it. But God had me in his hands. If it wasn't for him, I would probably not be standing here right now. It's just a feeling that I haven't been able to shake since I walked through the doors of the church this morning. He is there to help you. He is a covenant keeping God and he is there to never fail you. Whether it seems like he's there or not, I promise he is standing right beside of you. And like I said, this may just be for me. It may not be for anybody in here. But if it's you, please step out because I will pray for you myself. There's other people in here that will also pray with you.
guess what? There was those that were vulnerable enough to come down, but I believe there's more. So this is what I want us to do. I want us to take a hand. I want us to lay a hand on our shoulders. Whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing, and we're going to begin to pray. And how you pray against depression and fear is you begin to bind it. And then we're going to lose some things, and we're going to lose it into you because that's just how it works. Because we have the authority to bind and loose through the power of the Holy Ghost. So what I want us to do right now is just begin to pray. Lord, right now, it's been spoken. It's been called out. Depression, fears, anxieties, all of these things, Lord. But we come against them in the name of Jesus Christ by the authority of the Holy Ghost. And we bind those things. And, Lord, we cast them back to hell from which they came. Now, Lord, we're going to lose them to every body and mind and heart. Lord, a spirit of truth, a spirit of peace, Lord, right now in the Holy Ghost. That you would allow them, Lord, to feel the release and to feel the power of your anointed hand as it moves up on them right now in Jesus' name and break and destroy every yoke because of the anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name right now. And they're going to walk out of this place, Lord, today refreshed in the strength of the power of your presence as we give you the glory and the honor because there is none like our Father. There's none like our Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for your divine touch. And thank you, church, for being so sensitive in the Holy Ghost. I want you to take a few moments. I want you to greet somebody and say something kind to them. Please step out. Greet a a guest. There's so many guests here today, but so many of our own regular family just want to say thank you, church, for everything you do in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. That's it. Step around, greet somebody, hug a neck. Come on, families were mended today. Lives were touched. Already we've had ministry in the body, and I'm so thankful for His divine word. Thank you for being sensitive today. Thank you, Sister Jordan. What, wasn't that beautiful? My goodness. Thank you, Brother Josh, for this morning. Brother Nathan, for your lead. Our praise team always does a super job. Thank you uh, uh, to our, our jam for such a kind basket this morning. Thank you for everything our departments here do. A wonderful youth retreat that went on this week and uh, I'm so thankful for our youth I'm confident that we are turning this generation loose with the knowledge and understanding of the supernatural and I'm so thankful for that and uh, continue to pray for those that are uh, maybe some watching here today like Sister Melba Thomas needs a touch of God and as she continually strengthens her body and mind uh, let just let her know we love her and pray for her and Brother Thomas uh, back in the hospital just pray your hand to be up on his body and mind in Jesus name and and, and anyone just look around and, and just see somebody that's not here and, and maybe today they need prayer uh, uh, Brother Mark, Sister Mary is uh, preaching in Nacogdoches, Texas today. Pray for them. And uh, so just the work of the Lord is carrying on, folks. And I'm so thankful for what God is doing. Have you ever been in a place where you hear somebody say a word and, and you know it's not the right word? But then you're going to step out in faith and correct them and then say a wrong word. If y'all ever done that, like I do it quite, quite regularly. It's kind of what this message is today. <laughs> so I, it just feels kind of like that. Um, but I feel it's, it's, it's a, a word for today for some of us to hang on to as we go forward. And um, just simply titling this today, A Fight for the Future. 
I want us to continue this morning. Uh, Sister Bridget called, and Haley is not doing very well. We want to pray for her. I, I just I stand up here sometimes, and names and people are flooding in my mind and my thoughts. So I'm going to turn your attention to Luke 17, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to read verse one. I'm going to go to 11 and through 13, 20, 31 through 33. And I'd like to say today at four o'clock, Sister Marty and the connection. What what do we? Confection connection will be bacon, but then we we've, we've got this thing tied together. Right after that, at five thirty, Sister Melissa is going to be doing what? What do we call the group? Oh, the commit to be fit. So we're going to stretch our belt and then commit to be fit back to back. So if you're looking for something to do today, you can eat a cupcake. And do squats all at the same time. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a fun, wonderful day today. Verse 1. Then said he unto his disciples, It is impossible but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they that lifted up their voices said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. 31 through 33. In that day, he which shall be up on the housetop and his stuff in his house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Now I want to hang on this today because just in the middle of nowhere. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. God bless you and you may be seated. I like to say it's an honor to have all my family here today and my, my, my babies and my grandbabies and always good to have them home and in church with us. And uh, thank you for uh, making us always feel like this is home and family. And so thank you for that. This may be a very odd uh, choice of verses for a baby dedication. But I hope to paint a picture uh, for little Drake Johnson, he's eating right now, <laughs> and I love that. Parents Tristan and Olivia, and little Connor, he's he's hanging around too. Maybe he's taking a nap. And uh, little Connor Carpenter, isn't that awesome? Parents Jake and Cheyenne, and 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 what I want to paint is it's a fight for the future. It really is. We often say at funerals about how short life is. And we talk about that stuff. And, and, and whether it's 85, 90, 100 years old, we still say it was really short. And it is really short. But then what about these instances when you're looking at the future and you're looking at a baby and we begin to talk about that. And Peter said one day... It's like a thousand years to the Lord. One day, a thousand years to the Lord. Sorry now for the boring math, all right? To man, it's 24 hours in a day. But to God, 24 hours is 365,000. So if you multiply 24 by 365,000, you're going to get 8,760,000 hours to God. Divide an average man's life and say we'll use 80 years old. God sees our lives 
at about 11 and a half minutes long. Think about that a minute. That's not a whole lot of time when you begin to think about it from the beginning to the end. So thus we understand when James says life is a vapor, it brings a whole new meaning to life is really too short to hold on to regrets and frustrations and anxieties and things of that nature when we begin to look at life as a whole. I, I didn't start my little timer. I, I, we'll, we'll go ahead and get that going. So we see an expedient mindset in the Word of God when we look at this passage of Scripture and it starts with the truth in life. It's a progression uh, of things as we walk this old world and as we walk in this old life, we're going to guard against things. But listen to me, offenses will come. It's just how we're taught to handle them that's going to make the difference in the fight at times. Then as we move through this chapter, we see that they encounter sickness. So you're going to have some offenses. You're going to face sickness at times. Folks, listen to me. It, 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 there is no respecter of individuals. Uh, sickness and offenses are coming to us all. That's not, a, that's not a negative statement. It's just a reality check. And then in verse 20, the questions start flooding in and, and, and they're asking the Lord uh, uh, about the things of the kingdom of God. And the Lord says sometimes we have to look back, but we have to keep moving forward. It's what we look backwards at and we learn from and we may stumble and we may have struggles, but we don't stay at those places. We get up and we fight for a better future. And so the Lord is answering the question of the Pharisees who were inquiring when the kingdom of God would actually come to pass. And so the Lord embarks on an explanation to them uh, of, of what would take place when his kingdom would come to pass. And so the Lord would bring to pass the thought that he had uh, in, in reality missed probably what the current kingdom looked like in that day. But because we have the word of God in this day, we can understand a lot of things about the kingdom of God. But Romans 14 and 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and, and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So even on a baby dedication, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It, it's, it's, it's real for us here today. And, and one of the signs of that taking place in your life, you're hearing it even in our prayer room now, tongues will take place in your life. And it is a sign to you that something took place in your life. And then if you feel the urge in that area, then you'll probably feel the urge to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And in that name, there is power and authority. But he instructs and gives instructions for this kingdom. And it was different than any other that they have heard at that time. Because you see, when we are called into this kingdom, there are some things we need to pay attention to. All right? If we are on the housetop, don't go in the house and get your stuff. I mean, that's just in my words, put it like that. If we're out in the field, don't go back and try to gather a U-Haul up and carry all your possessions. See, we will lose our life if we try to preserve and hoard it. And we will only find life by losing it. There's a lot of paradoxes here. And, and there is a fine line of separation that comes with this kingdom. And, and if you read it, it almost sounds like, like there's just not going to be a whole lot of people in heaven because it says there's going to be two in the bed and two grinding corn and two out in the field and one's going to make it and one's not going to make it and it's going to be a uh, one of those type deals. And then 
seemingly out of nowhere, one of the shortest verses in Scripture is just there. It, it just seems like it's lost there. It, it, it don't really belong there. And it, it, it just, it's just right in the middle of that dissertation, he goes, hey, remember Lot's wife. Maybe you don't look at the scripture quite like others do at times, but to me that just kind of, just why is it there? There are other passages in which the Lord or one of the writers of the epistles mention, say, an Old Testament character, but then they explain why they mention this Old Testament character. One of them was like, say, Esau. And we, we knew he was out there for a reason, but the reason was he sold his birthright for a morsel of bread and a bowl of whatever it was. How about Jonah, who laid in the belly of a big fish for three days? And, and, and the whole point was he was trying to get him to go to Nineveh and, and, and share this gospel. All Jesus says is just remember Lot's wife. And that's it. And he just moves on. No explanation, just a three-word sermon, and then Jesus just walks away from it. But to me, it stands out as a warning. There is something there that is gives valid reference for a specific reason. And so when we look at this and we try to understand as we dive into Lot's wife, don't really know that we can... Think about Lot without thinking about, I mean, Lot's wife without thinking about Lot himself. So Lot's wife is this nameless woman. We have no idea where she comes from. There is no background or pedigree or genealogy to give uh, reference to why she is even here. She is not a prophetess like Anna. She is not a judge like Deborah. She is not a queen like Esther who saved people from that maniac named Haman. She is not like Ruth who was an intruder, so to speak, that birthed a king. She is not like Rachel who gives birth to a great Egyptian prince. She is not like Hannah who in a prayer meeting and a prayer warrior who falls on the altar and cries out and bears a child. It's going to be a, a great prophet of the Old Testament. She is not even like Abigail, who demonstrated great nobility in a time of difficulty. She is not like Sarah, who, who moved out from her country and, and left her kindred and had a child when she was well past her hot flash stage. She is not like Mary of Bethany who changed the very atmosphere and broke a bottle of perfume and we call it an alabaster box. She is not like any of these great women of Scripture. Nothing is known of her, but yet the Lord takes a moment to say, Remember Lot's wife. So if we're going to know her, we're probably going to have to look at Lot to figure out who she is. Well, Lot is the nephew of Abraham. He is a fatherless child who is connected with a childless father. Because that was his name. They become fused together in something that was not the will of God. And Lot's actions and character could be summed up in other ways. Lot is not even really a good man. Lot is a very selfish man and he is driven by his own personal agendas. And, and so God is determined that Abraham needed to separate himself from Lot. And God's wisdom prevails and he directed Abraham to give Lot his very own choice because Lot was a very greedy man driven by his own program and God separates him from Abraham quickly, effortlessly, and with little scarring. And so one of the mysteries of Scripture is that Lot is called a righteous man. He's good enough to entertain angels. 
He's good enough to provide for his family and for the angels. He's good enough to even protect them in the moment. He's good enough to defend them. He is good enough that when God decides to destroy the cities, Lot, is going to be rescued. God's instructions to Lot were to get your wife and your daughters out of the city and flee to the mountains. And as Lot prepares to leave the city, he takes his nameless wife and his daughters and they are escorted by angels, folks. Escorted by angels. And this is where the story suddenly becomes very interesting. Suddenly Lot and his wife were opened up to the work of God and maybe a setting of an opportunity. We like to say, oh, I just want a blessing. But I have to pause for a moment today and say, I think if I'm choosing and picking, I would prefer an opportunity over a blessing. Now I'm not going to turn any blessings away. But if I'm picking and choosing. I'm already a very blessed man. I would love to have even a greater opportunity. It was an opportunity. It, 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 was, it was given a, a, a mindset of choice. It was a mindset that. I don't necessarily need this blessing you're giving me, but you are leading me into this opportunity. And so much can be done with an opportunity if we are willing to invest in God's purpose, an opportunity to stay with it. If you have no other reason today, an opportunity to stay with the kingdom of God, that is the main reason. An opportunity to turn life around, an opportunity to improve a mind, an opportunity to inform, uh, to, to, uh, form good habits, an opportunity to be useful, an opportunity to invest in life and not waste it, an opportunity to make a plan for the future. And that's what we're here talking about today. Two young babies that are facing a future that we're gonna have to help them fight for. So here, here's the message. The problem with Lot's wife is that she missed her opportunity. See, at first glance, there is the tendency to think that she is a corrupt sinner or a reprobate or a godless woman who is deprived. Perhaps the memorial of remembrance is to look at her sin and stay away from it. Whatever it is that you want to focus on. But this cannot be the case because God brought her out. So whatever she was or even had the potential to be, she wasn't bad enough for God to want to destroy her because he sent angels to escort them out. Lot, the Bible says he's righteous. I don't know who, who are we comparing the righteous to. I guess if you're comparing his righteousness to Sodom and Gomorrah, he's pretty righteous. No one, folks, is that bad that God does not want to save them. I, I know we love to talk about hell and going to hell and that's good and we love to talk about heaven and we get all happy about it. The, 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 the mindset is there is a heaven and there is a hell, folks. There really is. And so we, we want to miss one and make one, but we don't want to focus so much on one that we can't get our mindset off of it. But I'm here to tell you that God would all come to repentance, folks. He, he, he doesn't want anyone to be lost on this earth. See, Lot's wife was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah was not about whether or not she would get out, but rather, what do you do after you come out? See, that, that is a picture of the Christian world today. We've come out of the world. We've come into the church, so to speak. But now what? So as she is leaving 
And on the way to her destiny, she has this future that's ahead of her. She aborted her purpose by simply looking back. She did not go back to what was burning down. She simply looked back. What would make this woman who had a safe future in front of her look back? Why would she throw away the hopes for tomorrow with one look back? Why would she look back when everything God had for her was in front of her? Everything that God has for us, folks, is in our Future. We can't go forward looking back at old years, at old mistakes, at old grudges, at old offenses, at old hurts or old dilemmas that have been created either by ourselves or someone else in life. Because if we keep looking back, we will turn into a pillar of salt, so to speak. Now, salt's not all bad. I think she turned into a pillow of salt instead of a rock because salt seasons. I think a lot of times we understand that that salt was a memorial. That salt was something that says, hey, let this be a seasoning of your life. Let this be an understanding that I was someone who seasoned somebody else. And when she became salt, Lot became someone else. See, the problem is not going back. It's looking back. It's a fight for the future. See, if we're going to do anything in remembering Lot's wife, Jesus said there are some points we'll have to observe and understand. She symbolizes the modern Christian in so many ways who has had enough faith to get out but still has so many issues in our life that we can't embrace what God has for us. Is this all right? What happened yesterday is over, folks. You can't redeem yesterday. It's already been said already. You, you can't go back and draw on it. It's time to move forward in every situation of life. It doesn't matter how long we've been sitting around here. It doesn't matter what I've had to go through in a younger life. And these children seemingly today don't have to do what I had to do. That's yesterday. We live in this world today about what are you doing for me today? So if we'll focus on tomorrow, all of us are on this level playing field. If we're going to receive something from God today, today, why am I looking at yesterday? See, we need to leave some things today right here on this altar. Some have already left some things on the altar. Some have prayed for others. We we come here, folks, not just to gather and kill a few hours of time, but we come here to minister to one another and, and, and are striving to help one another overcome, to give somebody a place of peace and comfort and rest that I can have hope to make it beyond my frustrations in this old world. I feel one of the reasons that Jesus wanted us to remember Lot's wife was because she had been delivered from a place physically but wasn't prepared for it mentally or spiritually. See, her body was out, but her mind stayed behind. Her situation was out, but her attitude was still in. Her position was out, but her condition was still still. And the most dangerous place for any individual to be is when we are divided in ourself. God had brought her to a place for which she had no real appreciation. God was trying to help her and she just couldn't get her mind wrapped around it. It's a fight for the future. 
So many times we seek to remain in the familiar when God wants to put us in the divine. I'm going to say that again because it, it was pretty awesome. So many times we seek to remain in the familiar because it's comfortable. When God wants to take us out of our comfortable and place us in something that is supernatural and divine. Just a three word sermon, folks. Remember Lot's wife. And he just walked away from it. He just left it hanging right out there. Remember that she was brought to a place that she wasn't ready to accept. Remember that she was brought out, but she couldn't get her mind out. Remember that she had her body out, but she couldn't get her thinking out. Remember that she was brought to a place of opportunity, but her faith could not hold out. Remember that she was brought to a place where destiny called and nothing she needed was in the past and everything was before her. Everything. First Peter 1 and 13 in the Living Bible says, so now you can look forward soberly and intellectually to more of God's kindness to you when Jesus Christ returns. Forget those things that are in yesterday and reach for tomorrow and do the will of God because we have some babies here today that we are fighting for their future. Her body was out. Her face was headed to Zoar. Her hands were in the hand of a blessed man, but her mind, her mind was looking back. So what about us? What, what is the lesson for us today? See, we can go to a blessed church, and this is a very blessed church. We can sing along with the blessed people. We can say blessed things. See, Lot's wife is the only person in Scripture who got out of a terrible situation and perished between two places. Now, I can't find anybody else that got out of a bad situation and on her way to a divine future loses her life. She was not murdered. She was not crucified. She was not in prison. This woman actually destroyed her very self. I think this is pretty awesome. You may want to write this down. She died because she was a monument. But she could have been a movement. See, the problem with Lot's wife was her mind. And she refused to accept the blessing that God had provided for her. And we can get our attitude adjusted, folks. We can stop crying over spilled milk. I don't know the story behind somebody crying over spilled milk, but I've heard it all my life. Maybe we can't save the city called Winfield, but there is one person we can save, and that is right here. We can save ourselves from this untoward generation. This is today your opportunity. We have come too far to die in between what God has for us. We have got gotten out of the world and, and no reason to stop now. This is our chance to break away from the familiar. We can't keep holding on with the past or we can't let go of things that we have always hung on to and march toward what God has for us. And she had not turned him to salt. Ammon and Moab would never have been born. And that's just the truth. If she had not looked back, those cities that troubled Israel would never have existed. All of this happened because somebody got stuck looking back. God did not bring us out, church, to get stuck over the new days that are to come. Let's 
pull our minds in and, and make some determinations to be steadfast and develop an appreciation for where we are right now and refuse to look back at the things maybe we have created some situations. Maybe you are facing some serious sickness and it's already been mentioned. I'm not going to rehash as you stand with me just for a moment because before the babies come, I just want to pray over us and believe God is going to bless here today in Jesus' name. And, and then we're going to watch uh, a video here in just a moment as you're, you're seated. But I wanted to give us a moment, a moment to just pray and and talk to the lord and and make some mind things right some things focus some just have a check up from the heart up and begin to understand that in this day God is calling us to just remember 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 I know I've said it a whole bunch today but we have to remember and I'm preaching to myself I'm not preaching to anybody else remember Lot's wife it was put there for a reason it's a fight for the future. It's a fight for things ahead. And I want us to just take a moment and I want us to pray, number one, for our minds. Our minds. Ooh, this is the battlefield, folks. This is where every war goes on. This is where things happen in our thought process and in our minds. And if we dwell on something long enough, our, our thought process will become a reality. So let's pray for our mind. Hey, back there is back there. Say, hey, mind, you're going to your opportunity right now in Jesus' name. Can we begin to pray for our mind right now? Come on, can we begin? Lay your hand on your own self if you need to and say, I pray for my mind. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would strengthen our mind. Lord, you have blessed me to bring me out of situation after situation after situation. And Lord, I don't want to get stuck in the revolving door of my own physical mindsets. The revolving door of what pleases me and my greedy nature, oh God. I pray for my mind, oh Lord, that you guard it and protect it and, and let us, Lord, have an understanding and determination that bleeds down into our heart and gives us a tenacity of a bulldog, Lord, to keep moving forward through the power and presence of the Holy Ghost and and guard our minds and our thoughts, O oh Lord, as we battle and fight for the things that are before us. We realize, Lord, that this is not a physical fight. We're going to hold our peace and let you fight in that arena. But in the supernatural, Lord, if we want it, we have to obtain it in Jesus' name. We have to move forward. We have to keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I'm so thankful for the day for everyone that's in this house Lord strengthen their minds they're not just any old body they're the ones you called they're the ones that are here today, Lord, because you spoke a word to them. They're here today, Lord, because you keep drawing them. They're not bad people. They're, there's no bad people, Lord. We, 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 we just strive. We make mistakes. We're, we're frustrated in life at times. And, Lord, we're, we're, we're nervous to be real to people and vulnerable and open. But give us the strength and the courage to stand up and keep moving. And so that we don't lose it in between, Lord, where we're leaving and where we're going and let our minds be focused that if you thought enough to call us and you thought enough to die for us then you will think enough to open doors to use us and I'm thankful today Lord as we press toward the mark of the prize of that high calling and I give you the glory and the honor in Jesus name thank you Lord for that touch thank you Lord for the power of your presence thank you Lord for everybody in this building today that you have encouraged in some manner or way. And I pray, Lord, that they walk in a newness and a freshness through the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. And we're going to watch a presentation.
awesome. Could we bring Connor and Drake down here right now at this time? And Brother Nathan, if you'll come, we have them a certificate and a little blanket. Because Lord knows babies need blankets. Anyone can come with the families. Anyone can come with the families. We're going to have a time of prayer. And we're going to get some anointing oil. And we're going to, we're going to put it. We're going to put that on. Look, Papa's got that baby right now. I love that. So sweet. Brother Nate, if you will go ahead and present them. Is always a special time. Papa, hold your finger out a little bit. Oh, yeah, Lady. Special time, especially when they're sleeping. I'm going to get you to put this over right here on your finger. And we're going to get you. Come on in and help us here. We're going to lay hands on these sweet babies. And we're going to pray over them. And we're going to give them back to the Lord in Jesus' name. Church, if you will stand with me and stretch your hands this way. Brother Nathan, if you will come in here and, and let's begin to pray. And I want these papas and dads and, and I want us to lay hands on these sweet babies and I want us to begin to pray because, folks, this is gifts, responsibilities, and, 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 and it's our, our focus to fight, to give them the ability and the, the, the mindset of being a blessing in this community and helping others and, and being a part. But the main thing is giving them the opportunity to feel the presence of an almighty God. And because God gave them to us, we're going to give them back to him in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray, can we? Lord, right now we pray for these sweet babies and these parents. I pray the Holy Ghost be on them, O oh God. What a beautiful and special and precious time this is for your divine will lord as you bind us together as you give them strength lord to raise these babies the wherewithal and the mindset but lord this is a tough time lord the, the, the babies are leaning on us they're looking to us they can't tell us when they're hurting they can't tell us when there's a struggle but lord as a parent we look to you the author and finisher of our faith to help us oh god provide for them bless them, heal them encourage them and I pray Lord for your divine will to be upon them, lead them in the ways oh God of your word and your will and let the power of your presence Lord mark them and let the hand of the Lord rest upon them and when the angels Lord encamp about them and let the enemy know that your hand is guiding and directing them in every way and Lord I pray a covering over them, a protection and thank you as you have given them to us now Lord we give them back to you into your care and into your love oh God let the power of your anointing rest upon these families in Jesus name and can we just clap the Lord and thank him right now for a divine touch of God oh hallelujah thank you families thank you for being here and thank you for entrusting us to to just dedicate these sweet babies to all the church. We love you. If y'all want to come and take pictures and do those things, if not, remember all the announcements. You're dismissed. In Jesus' name, God bless you.